Uh, further amendments? Any further amendments? Ms. McCollum. <laughs> you did it, Dutch. <laughs> Oops. Good work, Barbara. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Chair, I rise to offer an amendment to uphold our military's commitments to foreign-born Clerk will report. Desk. An amendment offered by Ms. McCullum of Minnesota. At the end of the bill, insert the following. Section, except as provided by subsection B, none of the funds made available by this act may be used to implement the elimination of existing... Uh, the, the amendment's considered read. The gentlewoman's recognized Thank for five you. minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Ms. Ming and I offer this. Uh, during the height of the Iraq War, uh, our military faced a shortage uh, to personnel to fill critical roles in the medical profession and language experts in particular, and many of us who were serving at that time know just how desperate our military was feeling. To help fill these gaps, Defense Secretary Robert Gates authorized the military accession to Vital, uh, Vital National Interests program in 2008. Now this program sought out enlistees into the Army, the Air Force, and the Navy. And they were foreign nationals who were legally present, foreign nationals who were legally present here in the United States who had these essential skills that our military was looking forward for in medical and language skills. They had to pass extensive background uh, tests. Medical recruits uh, committed to serve three years of active duty service or six years in the reserve. Um, and likely uh, became naturalized citizens after completing this basic training. That was part of their motivation. They wanted to serve a country that they had fallen in love with. Since 2009, more than 10,000 service members have participated in this program, and they fill critical roles in medical and language eccentric positions. And the military, without them, would have not have been able to meet these critical roles. The Pentagon now is considering a plan to end this successful program and cancel cancel enlistment contracts, sign contracts with, that are currently pending. This would devastate more than 4,000 foreign-born recruits. These people have been recruited who have signed, actually signed enlistment contracts, but they have not received their basic training orders. For at least 1,000 of these individuals whose visas have expired because they thought they were going to be you know, um, serving in the military, it would leave them at risk for deportation through no fault of their own. No fault of their own. They had signed contracts with the U.S. military. So I strongly believe reneging on these contracts puts these recruits at risk, and it's a betrayal of the people who only wanted to serve the United States. This amendment would prevent the use of federal funds to eliminate enlisting uh, enlistment contracts for the recruits in this program, except, and I want to be very clear, except in cases where the recruit has violated the laws of this land or the uniform military code of justice. We must ensure that the Department of Defense keeps its commitments to foreign-born recruits, and this amendment is a first step in holding the Pentagon accountable in doing that. Thank you, Ms. McCollum. Ms. Gra Ms. Granger? and it's used by the services to recruit and fill critical needs within the specialized skill sets. And this amendment addresses an issue that was reported in the press earlier this week. Uh, we continue to perform our due diligence by gathering information from the department on exactly how they intend to address this backlog of recruits that are currently in this delayed entry program as described by Ms. McCollum. I pledge to work with a gentlewoman by gathering more information for the department and addressing this issue together as the bill moves forward, and I yield back. So th thank you, uh, uh, Ms. Uh, Ms. Meng, or Mr. Ropersberger was first. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Oh, excuse uh, me, I, you're I a co-sponsor. Do you mind yielding to your colleague? I Ms. will Meng? yield. Oh, you can yield. Okay. Okay. It's always Perfect. good to see up on your seat. Uh, you know, it's good to get up. <laughs> <laughs> You no, know, you're, the, you're the Iron Man, so it oh. takes a while to get up. Well, if I can't do it, you can. <laughs> I'm a poet and don't know it. Um, I rise in support of Ms. McCollum's amendment. Um, one of my constituents is affected by this issue. And, you know, it's so important that when we have men and women who want to serve their country, uh, that we stand behind them, and we always have ha as a country. This immigration issue is tearing our country apart. It's really a shame if you look back when the Senate passed their immigration bill that our leadership in the House wouldn't put on the floor, but that's, that's history. But when we're, when we're talking about men and women 
that are, have given up their right for the visas because they thought they were a part of a process and it's being taken away, they could be deported. So I stand behind this uh, very strongly and I would hope we can move forward in favor of these individuals. Remember, this program is a program it is a specialty program. So these people going into this program have a language skill or a skill that we need in our military. Uh, thank you, Mr. Ms. Ming. Pleasure to recognize you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Congresswoman McCollum, for the thoughtful amendment before us today. I rise today in support of her amendment and in support of every individual in the MAVNI program who made a contract with the United States government that they would be willing to lay down their lives for our country and military service. They made a promise to our country and we made a promise to them. We cannot now, month and in some cases years, after making these commitments, rescind our offers to men and women who have been building their lives around the commitment they made to our nation's armed services and it's just not right. Personally, I have eight cases in my own district that I'm currently trying to assist and I'm sure there are more. I've written to President Trump to request simply that no person currently covered by the MAVNI program be deported due to the implementation of new policies being proposed by the Pentagon. If we want to have policy discussions about the termination of programs or the creation of new ones, that's fine. But I don't feel that it's fair to change the rules of the game for individuals who've built their lives around a promise that the U.S. government made to them. America is a nation that delivers on its promises, as is every person in this room. I'm not asking that the MAVNI program be extended or for additional money to be appropriated. I'm not even asking for special treatment. But I'm simply asking that those recruits who agreed to serve in our armed forces and who signed a contract to that effect be allowed to do so. And at the very least, should that not be possible, I ask that impacted individuals not be deported from the country they agreed to lay down their life for. Again, I thank Representative McCollum for her wonderful amendment. I support it and respectfully ask every person in this room to support it as well. I yield back. Thank you, Ms. Megan. Ms. Wasserman Schultz, recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, I rise in support of the general lady's amendment and uh, just to underscore that this is a critical program that helps make sure that we can recruit and add to the nation's military people who have skills that we badly need that we simply don't have available in, in the numbers that, that are necessary to help keep our country safe. Since the program started, as Ms. McCollum mentioned, more than 10,000 troops, most of them with service in the Army, have filled medical positions, language specialties that were identified by DOD as vital to the success of military operations. This isn't a, uh, you know, a quick way to get citizenship. Uh, or, an, or an easy pathway to, uh, to be admitted to the United States. These are critical needs that we have that are in short supply among U.S.-born troops. So under the Defense Department's plan, as outlined, these soldiers would not only watch their promise of citizenship crumble before their eyes, but even worse, be subject to deportation by the very country that they've been willing to risk their lives to protect. These recruits are on government roles detailing their addresses, their phone numbers, their legal statuses, and that will make them prime targets of a Department of Homeland Security that is already overzealously in deporting people. Now think about that. To the very people who have risked their lives to protect us, this administration would be saying, thanks a lot, but you're on your own. This is a radical stance on immigration and protecting our troops is directly at odds with the views of the vast majority of Americans. Breaking our promise of citizenship to immigrants who honorably served our nation is an affront to American values and a repudiation of the tenets of basic human decency and the antithesis of the ideals for which we stand. And moreover, nixing positions that are critical to operational success but are in short supply is irresponsible and dangerous. By all means, if there are individuals that need extra scrutiny, then scrutinize them. No one is suggesting that we shouldn't make sure that we keep our nation safe. But we aren't doing that if we deport people and cancel the contracts of people who are actually committed to helping our, keep our nation safer. I yield back the balance of my time. Thank the gentlewoman from Florida for her comments. Uh, yield uh, two minutes or as time as she may consume to Ms. Granger. Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, I would ask if the gentlelady is going to um, remove her and I, uh, her amendment and I will work with you uh, on this very important issue. 
happy to yield. Thank you, Ms. Granger. Happy to yield to uh, Thank you. Ms. McCollum. Uh, Thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, we owe it to these individuals to fix the problem. And uh, as members of Congress, we have a responsibility when someone signs a contract to put their life on the line for this country that we honor that agreement. So I appreciate um, the, the chairwoman's uh, bipartisan willingness to work on this. Um, I look forward to working with my ranking member, Mr. Vesklosky, and uh, with Ms. Ming. And with that, I will withdraw the amendment and look forward to working with you till we come to the floor in the manager's amendment. Thank you, Ms. McCollum. Any further amendments?